Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 12. This tutorial we're going to take a look at something called Raycast and we're going to add a bit more to this scene rather than just the walls, floor, gun and ammo. So don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on my channel and with that in mind, let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is create a C Sharp script, which will be for Raycast. So let's go to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create C Sharp script, and I'm gonna call this one player casting. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. And while it's loading, I'll explain what Raycast is. So Raycast is a way of detecting what is in front of us and how far in front of us it actually is. So for example, we could send a raycast out from our player to see how far away an enemy is or an object that we can pick up. It's relatively simple, but it's actually a very handy tool that we'll need to reference from other scripts. So to get this working, what we need to do is let's actually get rid of void start and any annotations because we don't need them. So to get this working precisely, we'll need three variables. The first two variables are going to be outside of any method, which is in this case, the update. And the third variable will be inside the update, just to you know mix it up a little bit. So we're going to start with what we call the distance from our target. So for example, whatever we're looking at is classed as the target, whether it be the wall, door, floor, enemy, anything. So public. And because it also has to be used from other scripts, so another script at some point will reference it, it needs to be static. So the whole idea of uh, what we did with the ammo, if we just quickly go over here, we had that static there because the handgun ammo, it needs to be referenced in other scripts. The same applies to our player casting script. Uh, it'll be a float and it's going to be distance from target semicolon. The next one is just going to be to target because the idea there is I kind of like to have uh, a view of what the variable is in the inspector panel. So I think I mentioned it last time. If we have a static variable, it doesn't appear here in the inspector panel, but I like to see it there for debug purposes. You don't need to do that if you don't want to, but it's, again, it's entirely up to you what you do with it. So public float and let's call it to target semicolon. So as I said, the third variable, let's put it inside void update. This one, we're not going to have public, but we're just going to have it as no, well, it's called a raycast hit, uh, but we're just going to call it hit. And it's something that will be referenced within the raycast itself. So inside void update, we have raycast hit. And then you can call this anything you would like. So I'm just going to call it hit semicolon. In fact, should we call it the hit or hit, whatever. I don't think it matters too much, to be honest. Uh, if and in brackets, we'll have physics because theoretically this is a physics Kind of thing going on here as you would expect dot raycast and in brackets again what we need to do here is define a couple of um theoretical numbers so in this case like the position direction and where we output to so it's all done here so firstly we need to transform dot position comma and then we need to transform direction. And by doing that, we need to say which direction this raycast is going out to. So in this case, we need to go transform dot transform direction. And in brackets, again, we need to put vector three dot forward. Obviously, we don't want it to go left or whatever or backwards. So it's going to be vector three dot forward close bracket, comma, and now the word out, O-U-T, or lowercase, and this is where we output what this result is. 
So from all of this, saying how far away we are from whatever object we're raycasting towards, we output it as a value in this variable that we've defined right here. And then close bracket, close bracket, and open curly bracket. So you see what we're doing here? We're actually making this a bit like, an, well, it is an if statement. I'm not saying a bit like, it is an if statement because the word if is right there. But what it's doing is basically no matter what, it is casting this ray out and then it's putting it inside hit. So what we do there is to target equals hit dot distance semicolon. Then we do distance from target is equal to to target semicolon and save the script. So you don't necessarily need both of these lines here. You could actually have distance from target is equal to hit dot distance. Again, the reason I have it there is so as I can see it in the inspector panel if we need to, you know, check a couple of things out. So we've written this Raycast script. What do we do with it now? Okay, so let's head back into Unity. And we need to attach this to something relevant. Now you could attach it to the first person controller. However, the Raycast would, uh, would can't get my words out, would run from basically here. And we want it to run from kind of the edge of the gun. So a good way of actually measuring this is on the FPS controller, right click, and sorry, not the FPS controller, the first person character. If we put our handgun back on, and then right click on first person character, create empty, and then move this forward to about there so we can see roughly where it is. So it is dead center of our character and controller. So we now need to attach the raycast to that object and it is just ahead of our gun. It's not intersecting with the gun or anything, but it's gonna be looking this way. So player casting, attach to that game object. You can see there's our two targets. So that should change when we press play and look at different things. So I'm going to turn the handgun off again. And I'm going to rename this to, let's say, casting object. Now you may need to move this a little bit back and forth depending on how things look. So let's press play whilst we actually have it selected in the hierarchy and we can see the number changing when we're looking at different things. So you can see we're looking at the floor right there. It's actually really small. As we grow up and look at the wall down there, we can see it's a distance of 13.4. And if we walk closer, there we go. We're right up against the wall. So no matter where we look, it's always casting towards what we're looking at and determining how far away that ray cast is. So the reason we use Raycast is, for example, if we fire from here and our enemy is, let's say, 17 away, like it is for this wall right now, but our shot can only reach 15, then there's a good chance that we would miss. So when we start creating the mechanics to shoot enemies, we're going to be using that Raycast quite a bit because it'll come in very, very useful. So if you have problems with your Raycast on this object for any reason, you may need to just kind of move it around a little bit. Just bear in mind, don't have it intersecting with anything just in case because it'd look a little bit silly or you get wrong figures. So I found it's always great to have it just a little bit ahead of where it needs to be. In that case, right there. So let's move on to a little bit of interior design, shall we? So. The room is quite bare. Why don't we have some tables and chairs in like you would expect to see? Well, the great thing is we have the asset store. The asset store is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think we have used the asset store before because we got a gun, didn't we? Have we done it before? I think we have. So if we head to the asset store and we're gonna look for uh, a pack I actually already have installed, uh, just because I figured it's actually quite good pack. Uh, so you can either search here or go on old store. I actually prefer the old store. I feel it's a lot more, well, it's quicker to be honest. Um, so if you search for mega fantasy props, 
and click free only because we do everything free here on this channel, we have this mega fantasy prop pack. And you can see right there in the first image, we have tables and chairs, which is pretty much exactly what we want. So go ahead and click import or download whatever option you have there. And as I said, I already brought this in, so we have it here. And let's go to prefabs and let's go to tables and let's bring in a table. Nice and simple. So it looks plain, it looks boring, it looks bare right now. Uh, but don't forget, everything here is changeable. You don't necessarily have to keep it as it is. What I mean by that is if we go to here, where we have the material, you could change that normal map. And you can see just how much it changes right here. Change the color of it if you wanted to. There's no right or wrong. You can have it looking however you would want it to be. So again, you, you don't have to have that table. There's quite a lot in here which would actually be kind of well suited to a Wolfenstein game. Again, you don't necessarily have to use the same pack that I'm using. It's it's absolutely entirely up to you. So I have this as 1.5 and let's tick convex. So we actually have a box collider, say box collider, an actual collider around it. So we can't walk into the table. Now uh, let's look at chairs. Let's bring in some chairs. So let's bring this one here. Uh, looks a little bit thin, so let's expand that out. So we could do that right there. Uh, let's rotate it by 90 and kind of slot it in place. Might want to take convex again, just so we get a collider around it. Hold control, press D, duplicate, bring another chair there. Hold control, press D. Let's switch that chair around, minus 90. So it's all just about interior design, like I say. You don't have to do anything I do. You don't have to do the exact same. You could, I don't know, have the chair rotated that way, I guess, a little bit if you wanted to. Uh, there's plenty of things in here as well to design with. Um, let's see what else we have here. Storage, you know, there's boxes, shelves, crates, everything. Uh, so you could use any of these as well. So what I would recommend you do before the next tutorial is if you kind of just build up your design using various uh, assets, you know, you don't have to use this one. Like I say, you could use absolutely anything at all, but there is plenty in here to uh, keep you well entertained. Like I say, barrels. Um, so yeah, next tutorial, what I think we'll do is we'll bring in some more kind of um, more environment, I think. I think I'd like to bring in, you know, like some drapes that you have down, like the propaganda drapes that you see in Wolfenstein. Uh, so we'll bring some of them in. Um, we'll do some font, you know, with our UI that we've got and maybe start looking at bringing in an enemy. So the last thing I'm going to do here is just quickly put in a box collider and actually it's probably best if I go onto the barrels themselves and add in colliders. There we go. So now let's take a quick look at what this looks like in our game now. Ah, okay. So the table and chairs looks a little bit high, but hey, who cares? <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, guys, what I would recommend next tutorial Build up your world with what you've got. Use as many assets as you can. Take your time. Develop what you need to. And I will see you all in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.